Hi there and welcome back to another video. So in this video I'm going to be showing you how to set up a cold storage key so that all your farming rewards go to a cold storage that is not accessible if your machine gets compromised. Now why are we talking about this in the first place? Well there was a Reddit post earlier today basically warning people of a PowerShell script that was being promoted on Discord that ended up stealing uh, 10 Chia from one user. I think down in the comments someone else came forward and said they lost 2 Chia. Now the script was being promoted as helping you sync your client and I think there was code in the script to do that but also there was a malicious line of code that would send the, your Chia to their wallet and also possibly uh, gather some information like maybe your private keys or your monotic phrase and then send it to a website's API where basically you know your whole Chia wallet is compromised and who knows what else it did. Now. Um, as someone who writes PowerShell scripts and utilities for Chia, you know, this kind of stuff just really irritates me and it's a real scumbag thing to do because, you know, some people are not savvy with coding or scripting and that's why they turn to other people to write some codes that they can use. Now, it is incumbent on the person who's running the code to, you know, do their due diligence to find out if it's legit or not. And if you can't read code, well, then you're kind of left with, um, just trusting the developer and trusting that other people have read the code if it's open source um, but at the end of the day the safest thing to do is just not run any code and you know just run everything in the GUI and, and that's the safest thing to do so you know it, it's a little bit you know ultimately you gotta blame the scammer because he's he's the real culprit in this you know but the people who actually ran the scripts without questioning whether it's safe or not you know they do have to take some responsibility so here's one of the messages that i found on discord now this is still up there um but the guy was called diagnostic dude and he was basically just you know promoting this on every one of the channels with a link to the github of the malicious script luckily this github has been taken down already um thanks to the community you know flagging as malicious um but yeah it's just a real scumbag thing to do. But, you know, I'm going to show you how to protect yourself by farming to a cold storage. So basically, if your harvester farms is going to send it to a wallet that is not accessible on the machine that you're farming on. So that kind of adds a layer of protection. Now, the, now the downside of this is that you will not have direct access to your wallet and your uh, Chia. So basically, if you want to have access to it, well, you're going to need to import this private key into your full node, and then, you know, you can have access to it. But, you know, if you are wanting to be safe, this is the thing to do. So it's really not that hard, actually. So at the end of this, you're basically just going to have two keys, one for plotting and farming. So that's going to be the key that you're already using. And then you're going to have a cold storage key that's just going to be used for your wallet operations. Now I'm going to be doing this on just a test machine. So here I just have a full node running. So this is going to be my primary wallet right here. And then if you go to the farm page, you can actually see where your farming rewards are being sent to. So if you look at here, let's just look at the last three uh, letters, it's S, Z, R. So these are where my rewards are being sent to. So my farmer reward and my pool reward. Now I think the farmer reward is like 0.25 Chia and the pool is 1.75. And then if we go to my wallet, you can see that my received address is this. Now if yours doesn't match this, that doesn't necessarily mean that's being sent to the wrong wallet because if I just do new address, you can see that it changes and then if I go back to my farm and I click right here you can see that this stays the same however this is still being sent to the same wallet um, it's just not the same uh, address so we already have our plotting and farming keys so how do we generate our cold storage key now the easiest way to do this in my opinion is to use PowerShell ironically you know we're doing this because of a PowerShell script but you're going to want to open up PowerShell and then you're going to want to go to the directory where the Chia executable command line tool is. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So you're going to do CD for change directory. And then this will give you the path. I'll post this in the description below. Um, so if you hit enter, you can see that it will be changed into the path where the Chia exe lives. So from there, you're just going to type out Chia. And then uh, it's going to be .exe. And then you're going to want this dot, uh, backslash in front of it. And then we're just going to type out keys and then generate. 
and this will generate a new key um, on your computer and then you're going to want to mark down this fingerprint so this fingerprint is going to be for the wallet uh, key that you're going to be using and then of course you're going to want to copy down the phrase that it gives you so really you want to add this to probably like an encrypted usb drive or something like that right now i'm just going to add it to a notepad file so let me go ahead and make this a little bit smaller now definitely write this down on a piece of paper as well you know save it you know make it safe you know the drill you know put it on three USBs, whatever you need to do to make sure that you will never lose this. So I'm just gonna type out a Chia key and let's just save it to my desktop. Now you would save it to a USB obviously, an encrypted one ideally. Let's do save. All right, so now that we have that saved, we need to get an address for this. So let's go ahead and type out Chia.exe and then do Kia or keys and then do show. So the first one should be the one that uh, is already on your machine. So this fingerprint doesn't match the one that we just created right here. So down here, you're gonna see the first wallet address. So this one should be sufficient. So basically, you're just gonna copy this right here, go to your farm tab, click these three little dots, manage farming rewards, and then you're gonna paste it into both of these right here. Now. So you're going to want to double check this probably eight or ten times because the last thing you want to do is send your Chia to some random address or address that does not exist. So do whatever you have to do to make sure that this is 100% correct. You know, if you want to send, you know, the smallest amount of Chia to this wallet and check it on Chia Explorer, then just do everything that you feel comfortable just to make sure that this is correct with your new address. So once you have that in there, you're going to want to delete this from the computer so you can just do this easily in powershell as well so we're going to do chia keys delete then we're going to do a dash f for fingerprint so we're just going to copy this right here this fingerprint now make sure that you're not deleting your uh, farming and your harvester fingerprint so that's going to be the one that was already on your machine so if we do this it will delete the fingerprint from the machine so it's not accessible if your machine gets compromised. Now when you do do this, I will warn you that you will get a warning uh, whenever you open this up saying that you no longer have the private key to the reward farming address. So like I said, it does give out a warning saying that using a farming address which is not, uh, which we don't have the private keys for. So if we go back to the GUI and we open this up, you know, it's going to take a little bit longer because it's searching for this uh, address with the private keys that you have. So, you know, that's why it's taking longer than normal. And it's not going to find it, so it's going to, you know, basically have this warning above each one as well. And that's normal, you know, if this is how you set up. Now, if you have not set this up and you see that, well, that might be a problem. So, um, yeah. So once this gets done checking, we should see the same warning up here. Now, how do you get access to your wallet if you need to you know, send some Chia to the exchange or, or wherever you want to send it? Well, you're going to have to add it back to this full node. Now, this is pretty easy to do as well. The only thing that you need to have is the phrase in a text file. Now, obviously, you don't want to have your phrase saved in a plain text file but this is, you're gonna need at least create one to re-import it as far as I know. Or you see right here, yeah, it's saying that basically it can't find this uh, address right here and any of the private keys that you have. So that is normal because we just deleted that key. Okay, so how do we get access to this wallet now that we've deleted it? You know, some time has passed, we want some Chia and we wanna send it somewhere. Well, it's pretty easy to do. You're going to want it to definitely still be in this directory right here. We're going to type out chia.exe, do uh, keys, add, and then I actually forgot the command, so you can always do dash h to get the help. So we're going to see that we have a dash f for the file name. So we're going to do dash f, and then we're going to give it the path to the text file that has our phrase in it. So mine's on my desktop, so we're going to do users, Mr. Pig, desktop, and then 
I believe I call it Chia Key. And then if we hit enter, it should start adding the private key. And here we can see that the public thing or the fingerprint is the same. And then it prints out the phrase again. Just real quick, if you don't want to import it from a text file, you can also import it directly in the GUI by going to the keys tab right here and then doing import from monotic phrase. And then you're going to just basically type out your cold storage uh, phrase one word at a time and then click next. So let's go ahead and close out of this Chia and then let's reopen it so that we can switch wallets that um, has the Chia that our harvesters are sending the coins to. So now that ha that has closed, let's open it back up. And then we should see two keys to choose, choose from. One, which is our harvester and farmer key that will always be on this machine. And the other is the one that we just added, which is going to be our cold storage wallet that we are going to want to add and remove as we need our Chia. Okay, so now that the Chia application is finally loaded, you can see that we have two keys to choose from. So if you want to access to the coins in your cold storage, you're going to choose the private key with the fingerprint of that. Now, since we haven't, you know, opened up this wallet before, we're going to of course have that little screen right there and then from here you should have access to the wallet you can see that this is the address that we copied into our reward farming address for our uh, harvester and if we actually go to our farm we should see that under here so now it should take a lot less time and here we can see that we no longer get that warning since this private key was added However, if we delete it again, obviously we'll get that warning again. Okay, so now that we're done sending our Chia from our cold storage, we're going to want to remove it from our machine again. So I'm not sure why I closed the application last time to change uh, keys, but you're going to want to click the keys tab and then go back to your harvester key. And then you're going to want to delete this fingerprint again. So let's go back to PowerShell and I'm just going to copy this again and then paste it. So anytime that you're done, whoops, what I do? Whoops, I forgot to add the dot in front of that. So anytime that you're done sending Chia from your cold storage, you're gonna to wanna to immediately remove it from your harvester machine or your full node so that it cannot be compromised. So now, if you did create a text file to import it, you're probably gonna to want to delete that text file uh, with your phrase in it. You know, as long as you have it saved, you know, either in a application that uh, you store your passwords in or you have it on a piece of paper, but you don't want a plain text file with your phrase in it, trust me. So now that we have all of this done, we are back to farming and our keys in our Chia is safe in our cold storage. Now at any point, if you got confused or if you're unsure about the steps that I mentioned in this video, I highly recommend going to this wiki. I will post it in the description below and you'll basically follow this guide right here. So this is step by step. Um, here you can see that they actually changed the farming reward in the config file. You can do that as well, or you can do it in the GUI and then confirm it that it got changed in the config. Either way is good. But um, yeah, every step was mentioned in this video is right here as well. So I do recommend going over this if you have any questions. Uh, now the last thing I just want to talk about is, you know, you can also store your phrase and your important information and something called key pass now this is an offline storage uh, you basically have a master password um, and then it's an encrypted database so you can store this on USB and you can feel safe knowing that it's encrypted and it can't just be read in a text file this is what I personally use now uh, you know, use whatever you feel comfortable with however you know I have heard only good things about key pass so this does seem like a very reliable software obviously there's some that are unofficial, so maybe stick with the official ones. Now, I hope this video was helpful. If you want to set something like this up, it's not absolutely necessary, but it's definitely best practice to do this. Now, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll try my best to answer them. Just please be extremely safe using third-party software, even ones that I've recommended in previous videos, because even at the time of recommendation, they probably could be good, but at any point, they can update it with malicious code, obviously. And if you do have any questions about you know, the code and my modules, I'll be happy to go over what a line does. If you're uncertain and you're not familiar, 
and I do have certain videos going over you know how I wrote some of this stuff obviously I don't go line by line of everything I wrote but you know I do give general overviews and I do go line by line for some of the scripts now I hope that you are a little bit safer after watching this video um, and until next time bye